You need to track the amount of time that a learner spends on a page and send it through XAPI to a learning record store. Well, you can easily do that inside of Storyline and we're gonna cover that today. Right, welcome back. If you haven't checked out my website already, go ahead and check out my website at learningdojo.ninja. Here you can find all of my previous blog posts. You can also find templates on Storyline and XAPI, and also full courses from A to Z on Articulate Storyline 360, Adobe Captivate, XAPI Fundamentals, Articulate Rise, Custom Scorm, and HTML5 Video. Now I have previous blog posts on how to send over XAPI statements, and you can check that out on my website. But today I'm going to add something to the statements. I'm going to add the amount of time that a learner spends on a page. So let's go ahead and pull up Storyline here. And I have this simple cooking 101 course. Right now there's an execute JavaScript. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that. I don't need that JavaScript right now, but we're going to add an XAPI statement here. Now with Articulate Storyline, when you publish to XAPI or CMI5, it automatically tracks the page. As soon as the learner comes to a page, it will send over an experienced verb. And when they leave a page, it will send over a left verb as well. Now we don't really have much control over that. I wish we could actually control those statements that are being sent over, but we're going to send over our own statements and we're going to add the amount of time that a learner spends on that page. In order to do that, we have to use a variable called elapsed time. How much time does the learner actually spend on the page? So let's go ahead and get to know that variable first of all. So I'm gonna go in and I'm going to insert a text box right here on my Cooking 101. You can do this on any page that you may have. It doesn't have to be the exact page that I'm working with right now, so keep that in mind. So let's go ahead and insert a variable and you can type it out manually or you can go into insert and right here where it says reference right here, you can insert a variable. Now there are project variables. These are variables that you've created that you've been working with, or there are built-in variables. These are variables that Storyline works with that you can take advantage of. So we're gonna go to the built-in section here. Now, if I scroll down, there is a slide dot elapsed time. Now notice that there are other elapsed times. There's a scene elapsed time. There is a course elapsed time as well. So we could do the same thing if you wanted to send over a variable with the whole amount of time spent in the course. But I'm just worried about this page. How much time have they spent inside of this page? So I'm gonna go down to scene elapsed time and just double click into there. Now this background is kind of dark, so let's go ahead and just select the text box here and go into the home tab and let's change the color of the text to white just so we can see it a little bit better. Now, if I preview this, notice that it's going to start counting up here. So it's gonna start, as soon as the page loads, it's gonna start counting up. And it goes really quickly and it's in the thousands already and we haven't been on this page for a thousand seconds. It's because this is actually milliseconds and not seconds. And so we would have to convert it to seconds if we want it to be more readable here. And I wanna do that. So I'm gonna come in here and click on close. And what I would need to do in order for this to be seconds, I would need to take this amount and I would need to divide it by a thousand basically. And that's how I get the seconds. I can't really divide this, like I couldn't just add a divide right here and then divide it by a thousand and have it show up. I'd have to store it, the results inside of a new variable. I don't really wanna do that for this, I can, but we're just gonna do that as soon as we send over the statement. So I'm gonna keep that just in place for now and we're gonna add a trigger that will send over an XAPI statement. So I'm gonna come in here and add a trigger and the trigger is going to be send XAPI statement. And again, if you haven't checked out my previous blog on how to send over statements and do this in general, go ahead and check that out as well. But right here, send XAPI statement, the learner experienced, and I can select this drop down box and Storyline will send over the experienced verb automatically when somebody goes to that page. So I don't need to do that one. I wanna do a different one here. So you can see here, asked, attempted, and commented, completed, and so forth. Storyline will also send over a left verb, which you don't see here, like the learner left the page. We don't really wanna do completed because completed is like the, the course when the course itself has been completed. So let's go ahead and just say something like interacted. Actually viewed is good. So viewed this course or this page 
and we can go in and add to it. So I'm gonna add a custom. I can use either use the introduction. Well, the introduction one is fine. So we're gonna say introduction. So the learner viewed introduction page, but I wanna to add to that statement. When I'm looking through the list of statements, I wanna see how long did they spend on that page. So I can expand upon this inside of Storyline, and all I have to do is come into this plus X API right here. Now this is the X API statement. If you're not familiar with X API statements, I have plenty of videos covering X API statements as well, but it's basically JSON, that's the format. It's almost like XML, where it has a key and it has a, and a value basically, and that value is where you store the information, and it has to have the quotes around it. So it's, it's structured in a very specific way, so be careful when you're editing this, but you could come over here under the object here, under the name and then English version here, you can see how it's gonna pass that information over, which right now is just the title of the slide. We want to add to that. So within these quotes, I can add additional text. And so I'm gonna go ahead and add a space, make sure that I don't get rid of that last quote there, but I'm gonna add a space and then I'm going to say viewed and then for however many seconds. So we're gonna just type in four and now I want to insert that time elapsed variable. But I have a problem here because what's gonna happen is it's going to insert the milliseconds. And we're gonna do this for now, but we're going to convert those milliseconds to seconds before we even send over the statement. So once we send over the statement, it's going to automatically have it converted. So keep that in mind. And so for, and I'm gonna come into variable, and then I'm gonna go down to the built-in variables here and go down to slide elapsed time. And now it's just gonna say 4.3 or 3 point whatever seconds. It's not really gonna say seconds here. So I may want to actually come in here and just type that in, just so it makes more sense in the statement viewer. And once we publish this out, you'll see what I mean here. It's just so it makes more sense here. All right, so we're good to go there. I'm gonna just click okay here. Now this is important, when this statement gets sent over is very important, so that means you have to keep in mind, you don't wanna send this when the timeline starts because they haven't spent any time on the page at this point, you wanna send it when they've actually, uh, or they're about to go on to the next page, which in this case is controlled by the next button. So under the when section, I'm gonna go ahead and say when the user clicks, but I'm gonna select the drop down box and I'm gonna go down to next button or swipe next. If I select that, this statement will run when the user clicks on the next button, which is exactly what we want because they're not gonna click on the next button until they've actually completed this page. Well, at least hopefully. So I'm gonna go ahead and click okay, and there we go. But I need to divide that time elapsed by a thousand before this actually gets sent over. So as soon as they click on the next button, we need to divide the time elapsed so we get the seconds and then we send over the statement. So we need to have one more trigger that's actually dividing that here. So I'm gonna come up to add a trigger, and then I'm going to divide or manipulate that variable. So I'm gonna come in here to not send X API statement. We're actually going to adjust the variable because we're gonna take those milliseconds, we're gonna adjust them to seconds, and then we're going to assign that basically and say, okay, it's now seconds instead. So. This takes a little getting used to, and if you haven't done it, practice it a couple times just to kind of process it in your mind as well. When the user clicks on the next button as well. So this is gonna happen before we send over the statement. That's key, we're gonna come back to that. But we're gonna say text set, and then we're gonna select the drop down box to slide elapsed time. And we're not going to set it, we're actually going to divide it. So we can do that by selecting the drop down box and going down to divide. We're gonna divide the elapsed time by a thousand. That's how we get our seconds. And so that's what we need to do. We need to divide that and then basically by a thousand and now the new variable is going to be there. We're gonna do this as soon as the user clicks the next button. So I'm gonna click okay. But look at what happens here. So let's review the triggers and the order of the triggers inside of Storyline is very important. So keep that in mind because it will run from top to bottom. So right now it's going to go on to the next button as soon as the user clicks the next button. 
that's not really what I want. And if you wanted to see this a little bit easier, if you come up to the group section, notice that everything, all of the actions are just kind of one line after the other. So this is actually an easier view to see exactly what happens. But jump to the next slide means that it's going to jump to the next slide before these other actions happen. And as soon as it jumps to the next slide, nothing else is going to run. So we need to have that as the last trigger that happens here. So I'm going to take these arrows and I'm going to move that down to the very last one. But we also need to divide this by a thousand before we send over the statement because that's important to figure out the seconds. And so I'm going to take this one and move it up. That's why I'm emphasizing that the order of the triggers is very important. So keep that in mind. And now we pretty much have this ready to go. So I can go ahead and hit save. And now I can publish this out to a learning management system. When I publish out, you can publish out to either XAPI or CMI5, depending on if your learning management system can handle this. You can also publish out if you're doing SCORM to an external learning record store. However, I have not gotten SCORM 2004 and LMS SCORM 2004 to send over XAPI statements to an external learning record store. And I think that has to do with the actor. And so right now, the best bet is if I come into publish here, find out if your learning management system can handle CMI5 or Tin Can API, which most of them do. And so at least the more modern ones will actually handle this. So you may be okay there. If you need to adjust the external learning record store, you can come into the settings and under the learning record store, you can type in this learning record store. Now I'm going to publish this out, upload it to SCORM Cloud, but I'm also sending this over to Watershed to show you that you can send over to an external learning record store as well. I'm going to go ahead and click OK, and then let's go ahead and hit publish. Now, depending on the size of your course, this may take a little while to publish out. And as soon as it's done, we'll want to zip it up and then upload it to our learning management system. All right, so it's finished publishing, so I can go ahead and just zip this up because we need to zip it up before we upload it to the learning management system. And you'll see this folder as soon as it's done zipping. I'm going to come over to SCORM Cloud, which is a test learning management system and a test learning record store. So it's actually both. You could do everything just right inside of here. And I like to test it out before I hand it on to the learning management system admins or something like that. Or if you're the learning management system admin, you can test it here just to make sure it's working before you upload it to your LMS. And uh, because if it's working here, it should work in your learning management system. I'm going to click on add content and then click on import. And this is a free account, so you can sign up for a free account. I'm going to click on browse here. I'm going to find that zipped course, click on upload, and then click on import course. And again, depending on the size of your course, it may take a little while to upload. And then once it's done uploading, we can go ahead and test. However, I'm actually also signed up for a free account of Watershed. And this gives me and this allows me to have an external learning record store. Now, one of the nice things about Watershed, you'll see here, is it has some general reports that um, SCORM Cloud does not. So as I start to feed data in here, I'll have this dashboard. Now, if I pay for it, then I can actually customize and get very detailed reports and dashboards that I can easily share out with stakeholders and other things like that. But I'm going to come back into SCORM Cloud, and it looks like I'm done uploading here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Launch. And we're going to launch this course, and I'm going to give it a couple of seconds here. So you can see the milliseconds. I forgot to get rid of that variable, but it's um, counting up there. And now I'm going to click on Next. Now, Next is when all of our actions happen. That's when it will take the current elapsed time. It will divide it by 1,000. It will send over the statement with that seconds in that statement, and then it will go on to the next page. All of that's happening really quickly. So I'm going to go ahead and hit close here, and we're going to see the data inside of SCORM Cloud, and then I'm going to see the data inside of Watershed. Inside of SCORM Cloud, you can go to View Registration Statement History. So introduction for 8.25 seconds. And so I waited 8.25 seconds before I clicked on the next button. And I saw that countdown going up, so that seems accurate there. And if I go into Watershed, and then I go into Data here, and then go into Data Search, you can see right here 
Jeff Bat left and viewed for 8.25 seconds. So this is interesting because it's actually added on to the left variable as well when I added it on there. And I don't know why. That's just that's something that storyline kind of controls. And because I added to that statement inside of uh, inside of storyline, it added it to their default trigger. So again, I'm not sure why it did that. I wish I had control over all the statements that storyline was sending over. But um, hopefully that's a future release or something. But for now, I can at least control it. And so as I'm starting to see the data, you can see right here, Jeff Bat viewed introduction for 8.25 seconds. And if you have a learning record store, full-fledged learning record store, you can start to create these types of reports inside of the learning record store. So you can see the activities that are coming in. You can see the interactions. There's my 8.25 seconds there. You can see different data sources. And that is essentially what data activities, if you have like a cooking 101 course, if you have some other type of course, you can see where all the data is coming from. It kind of compiles it together. So that's how you capture the amount of time that somebody spends inside of a page and how you actually add that to a statement and the base statements and send that over to a learning record store. If you want to check out more information, go ahead and check out my website, learningdojo.ninja. You can check out all my previous blog posts. You can also check out templates, both storyline templates and XAPI templates. You can also check out full courses, everything from A to Z with Articulate Storyline 360, Adobe Captivate, XAPI Fundamentals, Articulate Rise, Custom Squirm, HTML5 video, and more. But I'm curious, how would you actually use tracking the amount of time spent um, on the page? Would you, is that important information? Is that something you would use to improve the page or see where the most use is or something like that? So go ahead and comment below and let me know. Let me know how, how you would actually use that data. Also, if you haven't yet, make sure that you like and subscribe to this video so you're notified of all future videos that come out. Thanks everyone and I'll see you next time.